Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the Higher Education 4.0 project team, I would like to welcome you all to the Arrivo Auditorium here in the Atlantic Technological University Sligo campus. I would especially like to welcome Dr. Orla Flynn, President of the Atlantic Technological University, Dr. Brendan McCormick, Head of College, Atlantic TU Sligo, and Paul Hannigan, Head of Col College, Atlantic TU Donegal. I would also like to extend a warm welcome to all of our employer partners and everyone who has joined us via the live stream. To start our event today, please welcome Higher Education 4.0 Project Lead, Professor Jacqueline McCormack. Morning everyone, and um, I'd like to just add my uh, welcome to that of Kyle. Sorry, it's just... Um, it's great to see so many of you here and lots of others obviously joining us online as well. So uh, the Higher Ed uh, 4.0 project um, is funded via the Human Capital Initiative or HCI Pillar 3. And uh, really essentially it, it's uh, a project of the three now merged colleges of Atlantic Technological University along with 69 other employer and industry partners. And altogether we have uh, close to 12.4 million euros uh, and uh, really it's focused on equipping us for future agility in higher education and to allow us to be more respons responsive to the needs of employers. So although the three Atlantic TU partner colleges have had significant uh, activity in the area of lifelong learning and online learning, this project provides the resources to allow a step change in our capacity and to allow us to, to have higher levels of innovation and to further improve access and quality and increase our flexibility and our agility. So at the core of the project there are two services, one externally facing service and one internally facing service but both of them are focused on allowing our new university to be more responsive to the needs of employers and learners. So within the project then there are three themes or areas and the first of these, theme one, is this externally facing service which is focused on uh, recognition of prior learning or RPL and also a career and learning pathway service. And uh, this is going to significantly strengthen our capacity to support the processes of recognition of prior learning and also to put in place this career and learning pathway service which is specifically tailored to meet the needs of flexible and lifelong learners. Theme two of the project then is the internally facing part of the project and this is there to support online learning innovation and it is put, putting in place the infrastructure to support uh, 50 demonstration uh, sub-projects which have been put forward by academic teams across the college, across ATU. So these uh, 50 academic teams have put forward sub-projects in various innovations of online and flexible learning. And it's also allowing us to develop a sandbox or online innovation uh, unit for Atlantic Technological University. And then theme three then is about the project enablement and the organization of the various aspects of the project. So obviously with the 50 sub-projects, there are lots of moving parts in this project. So Kyle is the overall project director who's overseeing the enablement and management of the project and keeping us all on the right track and so on. And we also recognize that some of the uh, sub-projects that are put forward by the academic teams around Atlantic TU are going to involve uh, new policy, academic policy or processes. So we've recognised that and there's also a work package to give capacity, um, for example, to undertake research of national and international best practice to inform these policies and potential processes. So we're going to uh, move on now to just a short video which is going to give an overview of the project uh, and to allow you to hear a little bit more detail of the various different themes within the project. Higher Education 4.0 is an exciting and innovative project which is designed to transform the way learners and employer partners engage with third level education. It is funded by the Human Capital Initiative under Pillar 3 which covers innovation and agility. The project is split into two distinct areas. 
Firstly, we have an externally facing service that focuses on employer and employee needs, on career path and on the recognition of prior learning. And then secondly, we have an internally facing service which is focused on innovative learning models, on rapid course developments and the approval of relevant policies and processes. So combined together, these two services will help us to transform how learners access education and how we as educators develop and deliver course material to best suit a diverse range of learners and also how we engage with industry and employers to deliver skills for today's rapidly changing work environment. With the support of the Higher Ed 4.0 project, we've been able to launch MyCareerPath.ie. This website, which is unique to Ireland, will help guide learners and employers in developing learning pathways, including recognition of prior learning, or PL, to achieve their education and training needs. By visiting mycareerpath.ie, learners can book an appointment with one of our career learning pathway advisors, who will guide you through your learning pathways. Learners will be given access to interactive tools, career assessments, short e-learning courses to develop their skills at their own pace. Employers can book an appointment with our team who will work with your employees to develop career learning pathways and courses with the Atlantic Technological University to address skill shortages. We will also be able to advise on the recognition of prior learning where skills and experience you've already acquired can count towards your entry to a course at the Atlantic Technological University. Visit mycareerpath.ie to book an appointment with one of our advisors to start your journey to your dream career. Innovation is a key theme of the Higher Ed 4.0 project. Our core aim is to build a system to respond quickly to employer and learner needs in an agile, efficient and cost-effective way. We're developing new learning methods over the areas of work and project-based learning micro-credentials and MOOCs to ensure that we have the best teaching methods to reach different learning groups. We collaborate with industry to address skills shortages in several ways, by rapidly developing bespoke courses, by liaising with industry to ensure our course content addresses their current and future skills needs, and by ensuring that we work to engage with learners who may not have traditionally engaged with third level education. The agile and responsive approach we are taking also requires agile processes and appropriate policies within the ATU. By developing our policies in this way, we will have the ability to rapidly develop new courses to address industry skills shortages. The Higher Education 4.0 project has team members based across all of the Atlantic Technological University campuses and was one of the first distributed projects of the ATU. In order to deliver on the project goals in a lean and agile way, we've been innovative, not just in project development, but also in how we use technology for communications and project management across the team. This agile approach has been embraced by the ATU. It can be seen in how rapidly the team have been able to develop mycareerpath.ie and also in the sheer number of projects that are under the innovation theme. Of course, none of this would be possible without the tremendous levels of engagement we have had from our industry partners. Their input, advice and willingness to share insights has helped us develop a suite of projects that we believe will benefit business and learners from the West and Northwest for many years to come. The Higher Ed 4.0 project covers the areas of access and engagement with education, innovative teaching methods and agile policy development, all of which are supported by high levels of engagement with our industry partners. To find out more about the project, visit higheredfor.ie. For media queries, or if you're interested in becoming one of our industry partners, contact details are available on our website. For updates on project progress, interviews and more, don't forget to follow our social media channels. Welcome Dr. Orla Flynn, President of the Atlantic Technological University. Do you have glare? It's Misha Orlini Line Uxron, an institute.
in Ulskal Technolator on Atlantic. August Tough Fall tomorrow I've Glair in Rajan. Um, I'm absolutely delighted to be here and you know it's, it's just extraordinarily fitting uh, that in a week of celebrations marking our launch of our new technological university uh, and a week of um, launching various initiatives, uh, a week where we are looking uh, very much at sustainability and well-being as a, as a theme uh, running through our entire uh, week of, of events, that the sustainability of our region is very much to the fore and that a project uh, that, that got started uh, long before uh, we were legally uh, c combined or legally uh, as one entity, uh, that we are, this is the first event that we are celebrating as part of our, our launch week. And uh, I think as the slides uh, indicate there, <clears throat> we are, we, we, we're in the middle of a, a fantastically exciting week. We uh, came together legally last Friday and yesterday we had a whole series of, of launch um, events across all of our campuses. And uh, to arrive here again today and to see colleagues uh, from, from Donegal, from Galway, from Mayo and from Sligo all here, um, physically here, joining us online and uh, working together uh, is just so heartening and it's really exciting. We have a strong history of collaboration between the three former institutes of technology and uh, again human capital initiative funding um, supporting this project and again this project is, is focused on helping our region uh, to grow, to thrive and ultimately uh, towards a journey of sustainability. Uh, and in many ways, this project sums up what we will be all about as a, a new technological university. Uh, sometimes we will have to be inward looking in order to enable us to be, be more effective in how we look outwards. And I think we've heard a little bit about the two sides of this HiRed 4.0 project uh, to, uh, to, to look at our systems internally and all the while looking at the needs of industry uh, and the employers uh, of the region. So we will be hearing a lot more in the next number of days around um, initiatives, around driving innov innovation, research and development, and indeed there will be a huge amount of emphasis on that in the, in the weeks, months and indeed years ahead. Uh, but, but the event today is all about education transformation. And again, um, we talked on Friday and yesterday about opportunity and access, and in a way this project allows us to remember that uh, our students are drawn from many different categories. They come in many different types. Um, there are 18 year olds who are coming from the Leave Insert. Uh, there are people who are in industry, they're in business, they're working in, in, um, in community settings. Um, and they're undergraduate, they're postgraduate, they're here for full-time courses, part-time courses. Uh, full awards, major awards, minor awards, special purpose awards, single subject certification. So our learners come from all uh, those different categories. And this particular project is really about education transformation, providing opportunities, particularly career pathways for those who are in industry. And it is about enhanced access for all types of learners. And uh, we, we, we've had many conversations with the IDA and will continue to do so. And it's projects like these that will help organizations like the IDA attract inward investment. It will allow existing employers in our region uh, to um, upskill their own workforces. And it will allow especially the multinationals to be really competitive in a, in a very difficult uh, global environment. Uh, really happy to hear the details of the project uh, and again working with employers and industry representative bodies to meet the 21st century employment needs. I think the, the digital agenda is certainly something that we are hearing uh, so much about um, and, and our region in particular. Access to broadband was one of the big issues uh, for, for our region uh, and the digital upskilling of, of all kinds of companies and employers in the region will be, will be hugely important. So I'm just gonna conclude by wishing the project team, Jacqueline, Kyle, all the entire project team, every, every good wish, and looking forward to seeing the journey, um, looking forward to engaging with you, and looking forward to celebrating all the successes that you will have um, in, the, in the months and in the years ahead. So, Gunnari and Talib, come on.
Thank you, Orla. Our next speaker today is Bridie Kaloran. Bridie is our Careers and Learning Pathways Manager, and she's going to say a few words around her theme of the project. Thanks, Bridie. Thank you, Kyle, for that introduction, and good morning, everybody. It's nice to see everybody here. I'm very proud um, that we have the ATU new president, Dr. Dr. Orla Flynn, and uh, Professor um, Jacqueline McCormack here launching um, this new service, mycareerpath.ie. Um, I'd like to thank also the ATU registrars uh, for all their support and guidance and the steering group involved in the committee. Um, I also want to acknowledge the leads on this project, um, Dr. Karina Ginty, who is the ATU Teaching and Learning, and uh, Gavin Clinch, ATU Online Learning for their fantastic support, their vision around this project, and the hard work that they do in, in getting it to where it is today. So, and finally, to thank all the internal and external stakeholders involved in this project. Um, there's been a lot of hard work that's happened in a very short space of time. So here is some of the team, and they're here with us today. Um, now, there's a lot of in the team behind the scenes, but these are very much the, the, the team that will be meeting learners as they're both through their learning pathway. So we have a fantastic group of talented, passionate people about what they do. So career and learning uh, pathway advisors, we have RPL coordinators, industrial enga industry engagement lead, and admin support. So um, I just want to acknowledge all their hard work in what they do. So what we've developed, um, so career learning pathways for people in industry. And we identified five personas that we felt would link in very much with people in the workplace who are now looking to upskill. So the first persona is um, a, a, the youth, uh, so somebody that may have left school early, maybe dropped out of college and wants to go back and engage in higher education again. Um, the career accelerator, so somebody who um, maybe has a lot of work experience in industry and is now looking to get a formal qualification. Or maybe somebody who has their first degree and they're not using it, their career has taken them a different way, and now they want to go back and specialise it at a postgraduate stage. The mastery path is for somebody who's achieved a lot in their career, but now maybe at the stage of looking uh, for a change, looking for a new challenge, and what do they need um, in order to do that. The dream builder then, somebody who's been very successful in their career, but now wants to go back and revisit a passion that they had for a subject area. And then finally, the entrepreneur path. Somebody who's very busy developing their business, but maybe there's gaps in their learning that they need to fill in order to progress their, their business further. So um, the developmental program is through four stages, and this is an online career developmental program. So the first stage, the starting blocks, is where they're looking inward, and they're looking at their personality, their skills. Um, you know, um, they'll do a strengths profile, they'll do a, an initial careers profile just to give them kind of um, a measure on where they are and they'll do this profile again at the end of the learning pathway just to see how things have progressed. Um, so the first stage is very much looking in and the second stage then is, is looking out is looking out at what supports. And they get access to an e-learning platform. And this is where they get supports on maybe fundamental skills, transversal skill development, maybe areas that they've identified that they need to develop in order to be successful in their career. The third stage then is they, they have their supported career and learning pathway action plan. And I want to say that each of these stages, they will meet a person, they will meet a career and learning pathway professional that will encourage them and support them on their pathway. And I think that's what's unique about the service. Um, they will also um, have access to recognition of prior learning supports and there's RPL coordinators that will help them in preparing their portfolio so they can have more success in getting recognition for their previous uh, learning. And then finally, the final stage is taking action. It's moving forward, it's pressing the button, it's pressing go. And if we're not pressing that button, why we're not? What are the, what are the barriers? Um, and we, uh, Career Learning Pathway Advisors will contact people three weeks after they finish their pathway to see where they're at and giving them that encouragement and self-support to, to go through it. 
Now, you would have seen from the video before the different pathways, but when we were building these learning pathways, we asked who they are, what they bring, what they need, and what supports they need. And we built the pathways around that. So a lot of um, kind of pre-work went in it, to structure the architecture behind it. And I don't want to bore you all with this detail, but we, you will see each, the learner will be brought through various tasks in each stage. And as I say, they will be mentored and supported but they'll be signposted out to all the ATU supports and the platform, which is fantastic. Uh, and we'll show you a short video of it now in a while, so you'll see all those resources that will be available freely to them. Um, so the second stage then is the e-learning resources. So really good e-learning resources. And sometimes, you know, learners might identify gaps in their learning, but they may not want to tell an employer that they have these gaps. So it, now they have this area where they can just go and revisit some of these areas and build up their confidence, whether it's IT skills, whether it's numeracy, whether it's literacy, whatever they have their insecurities around, it's all about building their confidence. Um, and then, as I say, we go through get set and the final taking action stage. So there's... Um, tasks in each stage that they must complete before they move on to the next stage of their learning. Um, okay, so just again briefly showing each of the pathways. We did the same. They're going to be different for each uh, learner. So here, for example, the career accelerator. This is early career. So we focused here a lot on, for example, transversal skills development. And that will be a key task as they go through their program. And we've done that for each of the pathways. We've identified the areas that are probably crucial at that point in their career. And we've built it and signposted to the expertise that's available on the platform. So, um, okay, so that's really kind of all of that. So when we are live now at the moment, and this is the landing page that you go into, Higher Education for All, Delivering Pathways into and through Higher Education. Um, so the learner has there the left-hand side, they'll click on that, and then they'll register. And then um, straight away, they will get a, book a video meeting with a career learning pathway advisor. So it's very streamlined. And I want to thank the IT technician, Dominico Cambron, who has really made a fantastic job here in terms of how the process, it's really easy and streamlined. Um, and then they get, after they meet the career learning pathway advisor, then they get access to the platform and their learning pathway. If you're an employer, then you, hear, you contact here and you upload your details. And we would be hoping to go out and meet employers in the workplace, deliver presentations, meet their employees, or RPL them on site, you know, really promote the various learning pathways and encourage and give them the confidence to go forward. Um, so employers can book those seminars and those interactions with us. So we're very proud of, of how it all is, is working. This is just a screenshot of the platform. Um, so you'll see it is lots of really good tiles, um, lots of little videos, there are short pieces of learning. Um, so you have interactive tools, online career assessments, and our pathways will bring them right to the, the place that they need to, to go when they're doing their online assessments. And then they get the reflective piece afterwards. There's e-learning courses, the recognition of prior learning, so it leads to the recognition of prior learning, and also the ATU courses and the important thing is that they're mentored through all of this. So what's really nice about this platform too is the language and the content is focused on people in industry, people in the workplace. So a lot of career development platforms you see are typically for undergraduate students. Here the focus is on people in work. So again, these are just some screenshots of the e-learning courses. As I say, really up-to-date information, uh, very current. It uses a lot of artificial intelligence. So you have things like, if you're preparing your RPL portfolio, you can prepare your CV, align with your learning outcomes from your course that you're hoping to apply for. There's also artificial intelligence used in interviews. Um, so various elements, so really nice, um, as I say, up-to-date technology. And also what you can see there, is the Career Edge Employability Framework, which is a part of the ATU employability statement. And um, learners come in here and they will do their little um, assessment in where they sit in the five key elements of employability at the beginning of the pathway and they do it again at the end. So it's nice to see that focus on the five key areas of employability and long-term employability that's built in as well. Um, and as I say, the, you know, the transversal skill development, we hear a lot about that now, and it's very important for employers, um, and again, that's an area that they can develop there. 
Um, also, what's really important is the recognition of power learning. So it leads to myexperience.ie, which is the ATU um, website for people engaging in recognition of power learning. So people will be mentored um, through this process, and it is very much about making your experience count. Um, we link very much with the TIA national project that's happening. Um, so that's really important. There's a huge amount of work that's happening nationally in terms of looking at processes and processes and how we market and we deal with ORPL. And we've just updated the website. So here you'll see the six key steps um, that the learners will go through. And again, it will link out straight to the ORPL coordinators that will help them prepare the materials so they have a better um, you know, access and better uh, success in terms of their portfolios. And finally, the most important, I suppose, you know, the external stakeholders in terms of industry. So we've had over 30 meetings with internal and external uh, stakeholders in this space. And the reaction has been fantastic. Um, industry are saying it's just perfect timing because they really feel they have to nurture and mind their employees. They have to develop from within. They can no longer rely on getting people externally into their companies. So we've had really good um, you know, interactions with industry. They also are very interested in us developing specific pathways for their employees, which is really good. And we have the supports to do that. Um, so we're working very much with the Employers Committee linked to this project and also developing a framework and strategy and how we move forward. But it's always about hearing their voice. And we have one of the first facilitated workshops happening tomorrow. And again, you know, really good um, buy-in from all the internal uh, people involved in this space. And we're going to look at the voice of employers, what they're saying they want for their employees, what they're saying, the skills they need, and also for the region, how we can develop the region in terms of this area. So thank you very much for your time, and I think we've just got a short little video that will give you an idea of the platform and, and the supports that will be available to learners. Thank you. Thinking about changing your career, developing your skills, or looking for that promotion? Always wanted to go to university, but not sure where to begin? Welcome to mycareerpath.ie brought to you by the ATU. Packed with interactive tools, e-learning content, and the latest job opportunities. All designed to help you navigate today's job market and move your career forward with confidence. Discover how your work experience and prior learning can support your career development by using the Recognition of Prior Learning, or PL tab. Take a look at our learning programs for focused, structured tasks around your areas of interest and development. Browse hundreds of e-learning courses focused on developing your career and workplace skills with advice direct from expert career coaches and hiring managers. Try our career assessments and get a better understanding of your strengths, tendencies, motivations, aspirations and workplace preferences. If you're looking for a job, use the job search engine to discover more about employers that might interest you. Follow them to keep up to date and search hundreds of jobs to find your perfect opportunity. For help creating your CV, check out the CV Builder. Then upload your CV to CV360. Score it against more than 50 checks and get instant, personalised feedback along with plenty of advice to help you perfect your CV. And work on your interview technique with Interview360. We value the importance of your career, your happiness and well-being. There is no better time than now to connect with mycareerpath.ie or speak with one of our advisors today. much Friday that was great I'd like to introduce now Eamon Walsh Eamon is, in, Eamon is our innovation project manager and he's going to speak to the innovation project theme thank you thanks very much uh, thanks Kyle and thanks uh, Jacqueline thanks everybody for being here with us this morning um, it's a great privilege and honor to be here on the inaugural week of our new university uh, and I finally get to work in a university, which, yay, which I always wanted to do. So, um, uh, 
And just uh, on, on the innovation theme, uh, which I'd like to talk to you about for a few moments, um, the overarching goal of which is to uh, transform the learning experience for all our students across the ATU, whether they are undergraduate, postgraduate, lifelong learners, whether they're on campus or whether they're online. We want to use the most appropriate educational technology to help to achieve this. And we are building a team to support the innovators across the TU to do this in an agile and a responsive way. And I'd like to start by thanking all those innovators who are working with us from across the TU, engaged with the project for their passion and their commitment for improving the learning experience for their students. Uh, you always have to be careful when saying thank yous, but there is one very special person to thank as well, and that's Brian Mulligan, who's the uh, worked in innovation management here at IT Sligo, uh, Sligo, <laughs> Sligo campus for many, many years. Uh, he was instrumental in, in driving forward innovation over the past good number of years. Uh, he was one of the proposers of, of this project and secured the funding. Uh, and I've been very delighted to work with him over the last few months getting up to speed with this project. And Brian is retiring this year, uh, but as I said to him in the past, when, when, please God, we are winning awards for the output from this project, uh, I'll be phoning you up, Brian, to dust off the tux and come back and come to the award ceremony with us. So, please God, that will happen. So we're enabling this process of innovation through a number of demonstration uh, sub-projects uh, which are funded through Higher Ed 4.0 and supported uh, by our team. Um, the first of these that I'd like to talk to you about is, is project-based and work-based learning. So this is very much speaking to what Bridie and, and Orla were referring to earlier, the 21st century or employability skills. So these are some of these softer skills which are very difficult to teach in the classroom, but much easier to teach through projects, through actually doing things, through building things, and from work, and from participating in work. So we're looking to develop these, these models of learning uh, and degrees and programs uh, in this space. The work-based learning is outside of the apprenticeship model. Uh, so this is typically where students might be one or two whole years uh, in the workplace, or maybe the entire degree. They'll be working three to four days a week and perhaps taking their, their studies, uh, the, the, the online, the content, much of which would be online, maybe one to two days a week. And we're doing this in new disciplines and trialing it out in things like hospitality, laboratory sciences, in design, and in civil engineering, uh, where you wouldn't typically have had uh, work-based learning before. Um, so that's uh, one, of the, uh, one of the areas we're looking at. Um, to support the, the project-based learning, and especially in the areas of STEM, we're looking to develop maker spaces. And these are open, collaborative spaces where students can come together and learn by doing, actually making things. Uh, so we're going to kit out these spaces with uh, technology, like 3D printers, laser cutters, and the like. Um, later on, we may look at arts and crafts as well, because that's another uh, thing that you can, you can put in there. But specifically, electronics, robotic kits, things like that. And what we'd like to do is create physical spaces within our campuses, but also look at a mobile space that might go out to schools and out to the community in a pop-up makerspace, if you like, and also enable some kind of online or virtual makerspace. We're also going to look at micro-credentials and things called MOOCs, these massive open online courses. And this is very much to, do, to facilitate and to um, to drive and help lifelong learners and look at the reskilling and the upskilling agenda. So we, we actually, for me, we actually uh, teach a lot of micro-credentials already. We call them special purpose awards. They're typically smaller pieces of learning. They're not a major award. They're like a, a minor award, if you like. Uh, but in the future, we might call them uh, micro-credentials. These can be stacked together or they can be to achieve a major award or they can be taken individually. Um, the, the MOOCs or the massive open online courses are a way of providing that through a MOOC platform to a global audience. Uh, and some of these could be taster courses, so not quite micro-credentials. People can then come on and take a micro-credential or a major award um, at our technological university. And finally, we have the sandbox area. So the sandbox is really where we get to test out and deploy new innovative model, ways of doing things with technology. 
and we're going to experiment a little bit here. Uh, we have some colleagues uh, at Letterkenny campus who are looking at virtual reality in a couple of areas around building uh, modeling and uh, building surveys, but also a really innovative looking at a virtual courtroom to try. So they're going to go into an actual courtroom with a 360 camera uh, and then turn that into a, a, a virtual reality experience for students, for somebody who's never actually been in a physical courtroom, which can be quite an intimidating place or a place we're not accustomed to, and to give you that sense of what it would be like to actually be there. Um, we're also going to look here in the sandbox area at remote labs, this idea of uh, augmented reality using gaming engines like Unreal Engine to create a lab experience, or remote controlling actual equipment in a lab, this idea of a digital twin. We're also looking at things like remote sensors, where we might have sensors deployed uh, for agri-food, say, on a real working farm, so students can work with live data rather than uh, virtual data, if you like. We're also going to look at adaptive learning, where the student, the, the content of the learning will adapt to the ability of the student uh, and, and go at their pace, if you like. Okay. So one of the things that we're also doing is funding the development of reusable learning content. So what that means is the development of content that lecturers are going to develop and then share with their colleagues across the ATU, or perhaps even make it open educational resources and share it with colleagues around the world. So rather than talk, and we're funding maybe about 30 projects in reusable learning content across the technological university. Uh, I can't go through all 30 projects, but I'm going to maybe try and do a live demo and just show you a flavour of some of the things that we're doing uh, in reusable content. So if you'll bear with me a sec, and hopefully this will work. Okay, the first of these uh, I'm going to show you is in the engineering space, so we're working with people like Paul Ferry and, and Rudy Copiate, I hope that I uh, pronounced that correctly, Rudy, uh, here in Sligo, looking at um, engineering uh, modules. And I'm just going to show a flavor for, uh, of this. So it is a, a series of videos, but rather than being a very passive experience, um, it's a very engaging, active experience for the learner. So if you can see the, hopefully see the screen moving a little bit here. So this is what's called screen casting. So in this video, this particular one I think is from Paul, um, the, he's actually recording his screen and talking over it as he does something here with computer-aided design. And then uh, as he's speaking to it, the, the student can watch this and engage with it. They might be trying it out on their own machine at, at the same time. But then right there in the middle of the video, so you don't have to come out of, of, of this lesson, if you like, which is a, a series of videos. There's a knowledge check. So the student can do a quick check. Sorry, no, I, I did that one already. Let's go to one I didn't do. Sorry. It's a benefit of running the, the demo earlier. Every time there's a little semicircle here on the timeline, there's another knowledge check. So I click on a knowledge check. So I can, if I was listening to the video, I would know the answer, but I've got that wrong. Okay, it's actually <laughs> parent view, but that's okay. The, the, the point here is to, it's to sense check your own knowledge, okay? So I can show the solution uh, as parent view, and I can retry and click on it. I get it right this time, okay? And so on, and you can imagine how this is a, more of a, an active experience, if you like, for the student, rather than a passive experience of just watching the videos. Uh, so there's a series of videos here uh, in this lesson, and then right at the end of the lesson plan, uh, you can check, you know, how you did. Okay, so the student is kind of uh, being able to check how, the, how they're working on it. The other thing we're, we're doing is publishing these on, uh, our, on an ATU platform, and another lecturer will just be able to click on the reuse button, download it, and use it in their, uh, for their module, if you like, so it's completely uh, reusable. Just another example I'd like to show you is a preparatory degree, so our course. So this is um, where you might have a student who would like to come on to second year on a course. So perhaps they've come from an FE college or they have other experience uh, from outside of the ATU. They'd like to come into second year, but they don't quite have the skills to do that. So what we're doing is working with uh, 
lecturers, Aurora and Nuriksha in this case, uh, who are putting together this preparatory course, if you like, for students to take. It's built with a system called Articulate, and again, it's a very kind of interactive experience, if you like. So the student can scroll down through the course. Again, it's flexible. They can take it in their own time. Um, and again, you're sent, they can sense check their knowledge. So I'll see here how good my basic maths is. Let's see. I hope that's minus 10, maybe. Yeah, okay, I got that one right. So I can, you can, if I didn't, I could take it again. I'll try another one. Go for minus five. No, that's wrong, okay. Uh, my maths isn't that good, so, well, I can just take it again, and off I go. You can put very engaging, kind of interactive uh, methods. It doesn't, it can be text, some of it. So it's actually, again, it's, it's an active experience for, for the student. As they're scrolling down through this uh, particular lesson, uh, they can see how, how, how much they've completed. They can come back to it later and finish it off if they wish. And, and right at the end, then, they'll be able to test their knowledge. And we can capture how they've done, and at the end, give them a digital badge. They might do a series of these, and then they can gain advanced entry into our second year of our course. The final one I'll just go through very quickly is something slightly different. So we're looking at... Uh, uh, helping Maria and Mary, who are developing their Fundamentals of Pastry, Baking and Desserts course at uh, Galway campus. Uh, so what we're doing here, and thanks to uh, Marie Meskel and her team of instructional designers, is creating this kind of uh, digital book, if you like. So there's uh, Meet uh, with Maria. Again, I might just make this big screen. Okay, and we'll go through this, this lesson. So again, here... Um, we have a, yeah, okay, sorry, just not going so good in the big screen. So here, we're, we're going through a recipe. So there's a number of recipes in, in this lesson that you'd like to go through. We create some hot spots here, which will give you the ingredients for the, uh, the, what we're about to bake. And then we can go through a quick video of Maria going through the, and I'll just stop that, okay. Can turn on the uh, closed captions for accessibility. Um, and this again, in a similar way, it's obviously not screencasting this time. We're working in, in, a, in, a, in a live kitchen called the Demo Theatre. Uh, I'll give you a sneak look at that in a second on the Galway campus. Uh, and so Maria is going through this video. Again, the video is about um, seven or eight minutes long, so it's, it's not too long. And we're switching views here as well at times. And I'll show you how that works in a second. Sometimes we're front on, sometimes we get in for a little bit of a more detailed view of what we're cooking. So I want to let you go through the whole thing. And again, we have some, um, uh, you know, little quizzes or interactions for the students to uh, check their knowledge. Okay, I really don't know that one, so <laughs> I'm not even going to try. And so on and so on, and there are a series of, of, of beautiful uh, cakes and pastries that we make in, in this lesson. And then at the end, uh, if we go to next steps, uh, you find a place where the students can go and upload their own uh, recipes and their, their own uh, creations, if you like, to a, an interactive Padlet board, which allows the, the students to interact with each other and it's, you get this peer-to-peer -peer interaction going on. And uh, that's just a taster, if you like, of, of three of the... Uh, of the reusable learning content that we're helping uh, people to create. Uh, and I'll just go back to give you a quick sneak preview. I was lucky enough to be there one day. Uh, so this is a behind the scenes look at the, the pastry making. So we just have a couple of cameras there, uh, which are set up. They don't have to be, any high definition camera will do. And then we have this wonderful little box here down in the middle. Uh, and so Maria, uh, or Mary, were sitting behind the counter make, making the wonderful creations. Uh, and a colleague of theirs, Cormac, was sitting here in front behind this, uh, what we call a, a magic box, or a black magic box. I see the guys here on the AV team have one of these today. The very low cost, uh, multi-camera live production. So there's almost no post editing of these videos. It's done in a very lean and, and agile way. So, Cormac is able to select the camera live as, as they're making the videos, and at the end, you just wrap it and pack it, and it's good to go. Um, so thank you very much for listening. I'm so glad that live demo kind of went okay. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks.
Simon. We've heard a lot about the benefits of strong links between employers and third level education. To give us some further insight into this, I would like to welcome Sean Carlin, Manager Retail Skillnet Ireland, who've been working with Atlantic TU Donegal for the past 15 years. Thank you very much. As I said, uh, my name is Sean Carlin. Um, I work for IBEC, the Irish Business and Employers Confederation, and part of that I work for the retail sector, which is Retail Ireland. And though you know IBEC or know about us, you know it's all made up of sectors, and the sectors we we they, they, we represent business. We're in a confederation of industry, so I work purely for the retail sector, and my role is education and training for the retail sector and I've been involved in that from the beginning uh, of uh, Skillnets where um, Skillnets was set up 23 years ago. But before I start, I just want to say that um, I was at your launch um, yesterday, the, the ATU uh, launch in Letterkenny and I've never felt as proud in all my life of anything and you know, the feeling was just unbelievable, overwhelming nearly, uh, you know, what's the, the, you know, what's in front of you all here, what's in front of us in the region, in the northwest? It's huge. And I mean, I've been involved in work-based learning for 23 years, and I've never seen more opportunity than there is now today to move forward for the world of work and the world of academia to come together. Because it wasn't always like that. And the journey that I've had through the last 23 years was rocky enough. But I'd love to be starting off now in what I'm doing and setting up career paths for retail. Because when I started out, that's what we set out to do. I sat 23 years ago in a room in Baggy Street in Dublin, coming from Donegal Town, worked as general manager in a shop called Michael Hennies, moved from retail into, uh, into IBEC. And I remember the first thing was said in that room from retailers all over the country, how do we professionalise the sector, number one, and how do we look at changing the concept from a job in a shop to a career in retail? Now, that was a huge ask coming from very, very low. But thank God, after 20-odd years, we're there and we have careers. And I just want to talk a little bit about how that happened and how we got there fairly quick. Um, so, the, as it was the first thing I want to say is that th that role, that when we were asked to professionalise the sector and to step up to the mark, uh, Skillnets was the vehicle that we, 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 we started with. Now, Skillnets was set up 23 years ago to look at an enterprise-led approach to training and development for people in employment. It was a great idea. There was, at the moment, I think there's about 63 networks or 67 at the moment, somewhere around that there, and, and they cover all areas. You have one Slego here as well, that covers is a multifaceted uh, network that looks at a lot of sectors. I'm sector specific, and I started off in the Northwest a long time ago, and now I'm a national network, and everyone, the networks are different, but there's a great, there's a great opening now for, the likes, for, the, for yourselves now to plug in to sectors and to plug on maybe via a skill net as well and I'll talk a little bit more about the sectors in a moment and some of the opportunities. Um, if you look at the, 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 the apprenticeship, at the minute we run the National Apprenticeship in Retail and that started off purely we run ourselves as a, as a sector, we don't uh, uh, tender it out to anyone, that's at level seven, that's a, that's a, upper, that's a, a supervisory managed position. We have 183 people on that apprenticeship. And believe it or not, our problem is keep, at the minute, is keeping the numbers low. There's such a demand for the apprenticeship we're running at the moment that we're having issues. We have 183 now, we have home, another 180 coming on in September in Cork when we move to Cork. And we're only in Dublin and Galway at the moment, in Cork, and the next stage is the Northwest to have our national apprenticeship in retail. That apprenticeship, I suppose, um, leads into our degree. We have 100 and 
3,840 people on our degree program, which is run in Dublin and run in Galway again, through using the lectures in the Institute in Letterkenny and supported by Retail Ireland. Very much supported by Retail Ireland, we're governed by a board of HR managers. Then we have a retail council, uh, sorry, CEOs on the board. Then under that is the HR managers and trainers. And then again, I have a steering committee. So we're very much enterprise driven and industry led and that's the key to the success. If you engage with industry and set out your parameters and set out your, your, your vision, then it's up to the industry to give you the numbers. And that's key because that's where I see a lot of um, um, providers fall. They, they, they come out, they start off at great gusto and all of a sudden, two years in, three years in, where's the numbers? Oh, the numbers have to come from industry and you have to put that in front of them and you have to make it clear. You, as the provider and the expert in the world of academia, have to join in with people in the world of work. It's their role to give you the numbers and we made that very clear from the start and that's key. That's why we have so many numbers on our apprenticeship and our degree and we haven't yet started to scale up. Not yet. And we have all those numbers. So when we do scale up then, that's our, what we have to develop and how we do that is our next, uh, our next plan. Here are some of the companies that we work with. And if you see all Irish companies, they're all doing either the degree or the apprenticeship, and they're multinational, they're, they're, there's international companies as well there, and they're all part of Retail Ireland, which is excellent in, in one way. 14% uh, of the working population is in retail. People don't, a lot of people don't realise that. That's huge. Over 300,000 people work in retail. We, we submit, I think, about 6 billion or over to... Um, uh, and VAT returns annually alone. So those are all, th that's how big the sector is. And yet, up until recently, it wasn't really used as a sector. People, you know, if, if you asked your kids or you said, you know, I want them to go into retail, do you believe it? There's 48 different professions in retail. From distribution, right through to e-commerce, right through the whole ambit, finance, whatever, sales, merchandising, distribution. Huge, huge, huge area. Getting bigger all the time. So, when we collaborate with retail uh, in order to help the sector, the finished product, as we see it, is three pillars. And we put those three pillars into everything we do. And that is the human skills, the retail skills, and the digital skills. And I heard someone talking there so much there early on about the digital skills and the importance. It's it's embedded in every single uh, module we have in the apprenticeship and in the degree, and it's changing all the time. We can't hardly keep up with it. We have a specialist person. A lot of you know Dr. Owen Doherty. He's on our team. He works and um, drives the apprenticeship. We also Russian Woods, who's a specialist in that whole side of e-commerce and digitalization. Key people driving the, 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 the apprenticeship and the degree and the career path. Um, I talked for a moment there as I come in to some of, the, some of the people here, I can't remember who it was, but we talked about um, the lectures. The lectures we use from LYAT are fantastic. Real brilliant lectures that we've developed over the years with them through study tours to maybe the likes of John Lewis in London and different places. And that's really, really important we found with these. But the icing on the cake is the subject matter experts that we bring in from industry. So you have your lectures, the lectures now know and they wait for them in every single module and they teach or deliver the module with the expectation of that lecture coming in from industry who puts the icing on the cake, so to speak. That's key. And the feedback back from the learners we have all highlight that. We love the lectures, they were fantastic, but the finishing touch was the experts from industry that came in. So that's one of the things that we've developed and we're working on that all the time to keep that up to speed. Just final slide here is just a little bit about ourselves. We found that we just, here's a, a piece of work we done ourselves, uh, it's called the retail, the, the retail Technology and Future Skills Report. We, we, we done this report ourselves internally because we needed to do it. Skills were such a, uh, the old report was 10 years old. 
So we decided there was, didn't seem to be see anything coming, so we recently did this report. And Dr. Owen Doherty uh, rolled out on it and Russian Woods done the report. And uh, it's a great report. We work very closely with the Retail Forum and Minister for Retail is, um, uh, is Damien English. And uh, they're using this at the moment as part of the new future, uh, the, the future, um, what's it called, the new, uh, the future of retail in Ireland report is coming out from the Department of Enterprise and Employment, and this is forming a big a part of that going forward. So we, we work very closely too with the, the, as I said, the retail forum, and uh, that's important now that we have a minister for retail and we have that. Um, so I suppose we're very open to work now with the ATU Sligo and Galway as well, wherever we, but we're, we're there for 15 years in, in, uh, in, in, in Letterkenny, but we, we're opening up all the time for new, just for new ideas and, to, and working with the world of academia. We've set up an awful lot ourselves. There's a lot to be taken from some of the practice we do. We have a lot to share with people. But as opposed, just to finish off, I think this is a very exciting time for you all. Really exciting. The opportunities that you have now at the moment to engage and to plug in to the sectors has never been better. And they're ready. For the first time now, we see those stores that I showed you there offering our career path to their employees. Come in, do your apprenticeship, two years. Don't do the first year of your degree because you've already done the two years. Move on to the second year and third year. And some stay on to do their honours. But that's four years and you have a fully fledged modern manager for retail. And they are starting to buy into that concept now. The other, from the student's point of view, from the learner's point of view, they like it because it's very cost effective. They can get into the job right away when they leave college and our next big move is marketing that piece from college to entry into the apprenticeship, which really haven't yet. We were so focused in a small team on developing what we had and then developing that whole um, curriculum and developing the career path that now we look at entry into that. And I said, so that's a little bit about, about ourselves, uh, about where we came from. And as I said, uh, my advice is when you're working and you're moving into work with industry from an academic partner with an industry partner. There's two totally different mindsets. And that's for sure. I've been right over it over the years. And the first one is you have to remember you're dealing with business people. And the model you have is totally different. So two things to remember if you want a, a sustainable partnership. Number one is ownership of what you develop. Has to be shared. Has to be shared. Ownership has to be shared. Secondly, funding has to be shared. <laughs> Budgets have to be shared. If you want the sustainable and the hundreds of people to get through it and you want to be successful, that's it. So, folks, I'm going to leave you with that and I wish you well in the future. Thank you so much, Sean. Finally, to finish up, we have received a message from Simon Harris, Minister for Further and Higher Education, Research, Innovation and Science. I'm so delighted to see Higher Education 4.0. This is a really important collaboration between the Atlantic Technological University and between industry. It's bringing together industry and education to look at how we can meet the education and skills needs of a region. And it couldn't come at a better time as we establish this new Atlantic Technological University for the West and Northwest region. I'm delighted to be in a position to fund this initiative through the Human Capital Initiative Pillar 3. coming today and for those who joined us online um, and you're welcome to join us some, for some refreshments in the hall and thank you again to all our speakers.